morning elect i'm here to give a study this morning and the study will be into the living waters of truth the woman says unto him sir thy has nothing to draw with and the well is deep from whence then has thou that living water aren't thou greater than our father jacob which gave us the well and drink thereof himself and his children and his cattle but whosoever drinketh of this water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And we're going to start our study this morning in Genesis 26, starting with verse uh, 1. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went into Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, unto uh, uh, Gear. Um, the, prophetically, the famine will be for truth. Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Isaac meaning laughter, uh, referring to the object of um, derision or something laughed about. Laughter is, a very con is very contagious, which can be related to singing or an expression of uh, synchronicity um, leading up um, um, futuristically um, for, to the internet. And Abimelech, meaning my father is king, Melch Melech um, is father. Abraham uh, introduced his, ha his half-sister Sarah to Abimelech, but he failed to mention uh, that she was his wife. When Abimelech took her, God told uh, him the truth, and Abimelech uh, relinqu relinquished uh, Sarah. Uh, and 80 years later, it happened with Isaac's wife, Rebekah. 80 meaning biblically... Um, it can represent the start or duration of freedom from oppressors. Spiritually, a, a man and woman, th um, though they are two, they will be one in marriage. Uh, the man being the, the flesh side and then the woman being the spiritual side that will bring forth. Uh, Abimelech meaning uh, king of a, of a society, a government. The Bible insists that a society must be governed by anointed sovereigns, uh, namely prophets and priests. And, and the king, um, being a good king, causes his people to be prosperous and uh, peaceful, whereas a bad king causes poverty and strife. The difference between the two is uh, dictated by how close to the law of nature the king operates uh, operates a kingdom that is wholly in tune with uh with uh, with uh, the laws of nature nature consists of only sovereign individuals and this without a physical king prophetically this will be when that woman will bring forth his righteous government that will be the 12 stars that will be in her crown 12 meaning god's perfect governmental foundation the nation of israel as a whole 12,000 from each tribe of Israel being the 144,000. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. She will come forth shining with all her glory. And when she does, uh, Satan will set up his government in perverseness to oppose this government. And there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Uh, Philistines um, meaning burrower, uh, to burrow, as to dig a hole. It also means to weaken. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Jesus says unto them, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, and I am not of this world. For thy hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above um, the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Um, be like the most high. Uh, Giar meaning to drag or drag away, mostly in a circular or uh, repetitive motion. 
uh, circular uh, as in celestially. Um, also chewing the cut as to chew food and then um, being dragged back up and chewed again and sent back down. Also means contention, stir up strife, uh, denotes uh, lion cubs, young uh, male lions, because they are expelled from their pride and they're forced to roam adjacent uh, territories, looking to take over another, um, another's pride and, um, and rule instead. Um, prophetically, being that old lion of Judah that will be roused up from its sleeping slumber, the king uh, of the pride of the seed line of the stars. And then the young lions come in to try to take over that pride. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may, he may devour. And then um, Genesis 26, verse 2, And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Prophetically, the angel of the Lord that will go before us, instructing us where, when to go and what we are to say. Egypt, prophetically, will be the perverse spirit of lies and deceit. The Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and has caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. God's children do not go down the celestial ladder of truth. They ascend it which I tell thee of, uh, you are to wait for um, his instructions. Then three, sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee and will bless thee, for unto thee and to thy seed I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto uh, Abraham thy father. This land being um, Gerar, meaning a circular motion, and Galilee also means a circular motion. I will be with thee, that spirit of Yahweh, Emmanuel, God with us, he being the Lord of hosts. Jesus tells the woman at the well, she being that first one to recognize him in the spirit and to take uh, him to be her spiritual husband. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Elijah ministry being the first two and a half months of the Lord's day, that being the five-month period split into two and a half month segments. The first two and a half months is the grace period, the Elijah ministry, which will prepare the hearts to the fathers, choosing your heavenly father of the spirit, uh, um, the rightful king, um, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, um, our uh, high priest Melchizedek, or that earthly king. And the last two and a half months is when he comes forth spiritually to this earth, inhabiting the vessel he chooses to speak through as our high priest. And we'll read of that in Revelation 19, starting with verse 11. And I saw heaven open, that being the supernatural realm being opened up, um, that boundary being lifted between heaven and earth. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, uh, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, the King of Kings uh, and uh, the Lord of Lords. This will be, um, will bring the marriage. Um, the woman that first recognizes him in the spirit, she left her earthly water pot and then she went into the city to lead them to, the, uh, to their spiritual father. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, Galilee meaning circle. And the mother of Jesus was there. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus says unto him, they have no wine. The wine being his blood, his DNA of the seed of the stars. And Jesus says unto her, Woman, 
what have I do with thee? My hour is not yet come. That being that last two and a half months when he unites with us in the spirit. This will happen when you will be sleeping and you will be woken up by like the sound of church bells. They will ring twice as a double witness. The bells were on the bottom of the high priest's robe. This is your high priest Melchizedek coming to visit you. You will then see a vision of a man sleeping with breath being blown on him. This will be the quickening, making you spiritually alive, where you'll be able to spiritually see and spiritually hear. When you see this vision of this man sleeping with breath being blown on him, this will let you know that you have been anointed in the Levitical priesthood under the high priest Melchizedek. It will be Jesus Christ himself who will anoint his priesthood of the end days, he being that cardio knower. Um, the seed, um, the seed line of the stars will possess the gate of their enemies. That is why Satan will try to prevent his pride from lifting up from their sleeping slumber. It will be Jesus Christ himself, that old lion being roused up, uh, celestially if they, um, um, becoming, um, one in the spirit climbing up that celestial ladder to meet I am that waits for us at the top. Satan will have no power over them, <clears throat> over those that are of the seed line of the stars. Uh, he uh, only has power over those that are of the earthly. And the Lord God, that is why we cannot be in the flesh. We have to be in the spirit. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, um, Thy art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field, and upon thy belly shall thy, thy art, and unto the dust shall thy return. Uh, oath as in an oath of seven. Seven meaning spiritual completeness. At the seventh dimension of time, we will take on the spiritual man. The six-day man of the flesh uh, will be ended. It will be time for that well of water springing up into everlasting life. Not down as in the abyss, as in digging deep uh, in, in, uh, for a well, but it will be springing up. Um, and then I'm going to go over and I'm going to read, uh, hold your place there, but I'm going to go over and read Genesis uh, chapter 1, starting with verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven as in heavenly, the celestial bodies, and the earth as in earthly. And the earth was without form, um, meaning worthless thing, desert, desolate, and void as in vacuity, as in the lack of thought, empty headedness, and darkness as in misery, wickedness, obscurity, as in the state of being unknown and hidden, was upon the face of the deep, that being the abyss, a surging mass of water. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light as in spiritual intellect spiritual illumination and there was light and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day we are children of the light children of the day we are not of the night nor are we of darkness and then back to Genesis 26, verse 4. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Uh, as the stars of heaven. The stars can be counted. That being the 12 stars that are in her crown. The 12,000 from each tribe of Israel being the 144,000. Being sealed with truth. Truth, that will be his mark, his seal, the Tav, that being his blood, his DNA. The Tav being that X, turning you from XY to XX, the full spiritual man coming forth. Satan wants you, wants you to be in his number, uh, standing on that number six, representing of that six-day man's weakness. Uh, he said that he will weaken the nations. Uh, um, six day man, uh, six meaning weakness of man. He is coming to weaken um, the, the nations, turning their DNA instead towards uh, him, Yahweh, um, um, to uh, him um, by that prick uh, of the gall of poison, refusing the X, taking the, um, um, refusing the X being the spiritual side of man. Uh, taking on the flesh man um, from XY 
uh, refusing the X to the YY, the full flesh man without the spirit, as in sodomy, man on man without the woman, woman being the spiritual side of man. They were they are refusing the woman uh, of the spirit. Um, you got to think spiritually. And then I'm going to go over to Genesis 6. And it came to pass, uh, Genesis 6, verse 1. And it came to pass, that being prophetically, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, that daughters were born unto them. Daughters being that spiritual side of man coming forth, that um, the X, um, X that, the, that being his DNA, his seed line of the stars, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. They will come in and take that X and put the Y and, the, and make them the full flesh instead, without the spirit, the YY, without the X, the Tav, the seal, uh, his DNA. And the Lord said, my spirit, as in that X, that Tav, shall not always strive with man, as in rule with man, for he is also flesh. <coughs> uh, that being um, them choosing that flesh over the spirit, yet his days shall be 120 years. <coughs> 120 means a divinely appointed time of waiting when God will save 12,000 from each tribe of Israel, that being the 144,000 that can be counted, that being the seed of the stars. And then five, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge and my commandments and my statutes and my laws, our high priest speaks in Zechariah 3, verse 7, that being our high priest Melchizedek, thus say the Lord of hosts, if I will walk in my ways, and if I will keep my charge, then I shall also judge my house, and shall also keep my courts, and I will give thee places um, to walk among those that stand by. Uh, that will be God's elect who will act as judges. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest of matters? And Isaac dwelt in Gerar, uh, he, um, mean, um, protected by uh, the Spirit. Um, um, he does what God has commanded him. And the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he, and he said, She is my sister, for he feared to say, she is my wife, lest said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebecca, because she was fair to look upon. Uh, she asked him, uh, him of his wife, him being that spirit of Yahweh within the vessel, that being that spiritual side of, of a man, that being the wife. Uh, Rebecca meaning tied up, secured as to tie up cattle for their own protection. Um, the established the establishment of their home and to keep them from wandering off uh, individuals are placed together by something higher or smarter than themselves that being god's elect they do not have a free will they are preordained uh, the elect according to the foreknowledge of god the father through the sanctification of the spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of jesus christ that being his dna the x Grace be unto you, and peace be multiplied, that DNA being of the seed of the stars, um, that will come forth at their appointed time. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect, and whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. When the four winds are released, the supernatural realm will be opened up. They will come forth, and he will send his angels with a, with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of, the, um, of heaven to the other. Rebecca was fair to look upon. Uh, behold, thy art fair, my love. Behold, thy art fair. Thy has dove eyes. The eyes be in the window of the soul, the dove representing of the Holy Spirit. And John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And eight, and it, um, 26, eight, and it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, looked out a window 
And so, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife, uh, came to pass, that being prophetically, he looked out a window, the window being the window of the soul, his soul looking towards Isaac, sporting as to laugh outright in merriment or in scorn, uh, mockery, play. And they rose up early on the morrow, and they offered burnt offerings, and they brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and to drink, and they rose up to play. And it came to pass when their hearts were merry, and they said, Call um, 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 for Samson that he might make a sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport, and they set him between the pillars. They will turn that sport of laughter, merriment, the union of man and woman, to scorn, mockery. When Yahweh comes forth in the vessel he chooses to speak through, they will mock this vessel as they did Jesus. And they shall mock him and shall scourge him and shall spit upon him and kill him. And on the third day he will rise again. And then verse 9 and Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety she is thy wife. And how saidest thou she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, Lest I die for her. Uh, they will know that, uh, that the spirit of Yahweh will be in the vessel, and they will seek out for the star, as did Herod. Um, this one that will hold that spirit of Yahweh, saying, Where is he that is born the king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Herod was called the king of the Jews. Then Herod, when he privately called the wise men, inquired if um, them diligently what time the star um, appeared. They will want to extinguish it. Uh, and his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, uh, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Uh, we are to protect the throne. Wherever the Spirit of God is will be his throne. Judah will protect his throne. They have that ruling scepter. They are to protect the faith. And Abimelech said, What is this that thy has done unto us? One of the people might lightly have lied with thy wife, and thy should have brought guiltiness upon us. Um, lie with thy wife as in a sexual connection, becoming one with her, that being the marriage union of the spirit. And Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He that touches this man or his wife shall surely but be put to death. They um, want to resist this marriage. Um, they being um, the Holy Spirit resistors. Um, they are here to resist that the rising of the old lion. Um, the law of sowing is related to the law of multiplication. Jesus spoke of seed that brought forth a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. That prophetically being the seed line of the stars, bringing them forth uh, to shine uh, with his glory. They cannot prevent this. And then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until it became very great. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. <coughs> he filled them with earth preventing the living waters from springing up, putting earth in there. They are of the six-day man of the earth. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thy art much mightier than we. When the stars um, in will increase with glory, they will possess the gates of their enemies. Uh, gate being a judgment gate. Judah is the tribe with the ruling scepter. They will have no power over the spiritual man. He is protected, tied up, secured as Rebecca. They are, um, are not of the earth as an earthly, but uh, of the celestially. 
of the stars. The beast will deceive um, them of the earth. That being that second beast of Revelation 13 that will come up out of the earth, having the two horns as a lamb and spake as a dragon. He will exercise all the power of the first beast before him being that beast that rose up out of the sea. The sea being the people's multitudes, nations, and tongues that will elevate him by serving the, um, those laws that he has set up as the man savior. They will elevate these laws for him. Um, and um, that came um, when the star uh, Wormwood fell, that brought the bitterness, that brought the calamity, that brought the laws of the man Savior. And we'll read of um, that in Revel Revelation 8. Starting with verse 10. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they remained bitter. Wormwood means bitterness, but it also means a calamity. A calamity is an event that causes a sudden disaster, distress, destruction. Uh, we know destruction to be Apollyon, Abaddon, for when they shall say peace and safety, um, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as a travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. That sudden disaster, distress, destruction that came upon us is the coronavirus, corona meaning crown, crown being a circular headdress worn by a monarch as a symbol of their authority. That will be the authority of the laws that they have set up uh, for as to save um, the six-day man from their death. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. God's children at that time will, um, will not be earthly, uh, so they will not be deceived. They are at a higher level on that celestial ladder. Uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. But unto you that fear my name, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Isaac went forward and grew until he became very great. And then we're going to go to um, verse 14. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants and the Philistines envied him. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. This will be, um, uh, prophetically, will be um, the man child. And we'll read in Revelation 12, um, verses 1 through 6. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with the child, cried, traveling in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And he, and he drew, his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was called up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three uh, score days. Let's see. And, um, and a, that was um, 15, 6, did I... That was 14. Actually, I went ahead of myself. I'm sorry. I um, meant to uh, read 14 first, and I read 15 and 16. I hope you understand. Well, let me go back. I want to make it clear. Um, so I, let's go to 11. And Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He that touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Uh, they will resist the marriage, um, this being of the Holy Spirit resistors, uh, resisting of the rising of the old lion. And then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Um, 
the law of sowing is related to the law of uh, multiplication. Jesus spoke of seed that brought forth a hundred, sixty, or thirty times which was what was sown. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. That prophetically being that seed line of the stars, bringing them forth in the spirit. And then... 13, and the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became um, very great. Uh, he's going um, forward. Um, okay. And then um, God will uh, tell us when we are to go forward. We are to wait for him. We we follow the angel of the Lord. And for he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and the great store of servants and the Philistines um, envied him. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. This will be um, that man child um, prophetically and that was Revelation 12, 1 through uh, 6. And then 15, for all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled uh, them with the earth. He filled them with the earth, presenting up, preventing on um, the living waters uh, that are springing up, they being of the earthly. Uh, and, and Abimelech said unto Isaac, go from us, for thy art much mightier than we. When the stars increase with glory, they will possess the gates of their enemies, gate being the judgment gate, Judas of the tribe with the ruling scepter. Uh, they will have no power over the spiritual man. He will be protected, tied up, secured as Rebecca. Uh, they are of the earth as an earthly, um, um, but um, not celestially as in the stars. The beast will deceive those that are of the earth. That being that second beast of Revelation 13 that will come out of the earth, having the two horns as a lamb and spake as a dragon. And, that, and then 17, And Isaac departed this and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac did again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. This is the well of springing water. This prophetically will be the living waters. And the herdmen of Giar did, did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of that well Ezek um, because they strove with him. The herdman, a herdman is a person who tends to livestock, especially cows and sheep, while a shepherd is a person who tends to sheep, especially by grazing a flock or watching over, um, being a, a guide. Giar meaning to drag or drag away, mostly in a circular motion, uh, circular as in celestially. Also to chew the cud, um, stir up, um, also stir up strife, lion cubs, um, those will be those that will claim that they are of Judah, Judah being um, of the lion, but they lie and are the synagogue of Satan. They are coming to resist the Holy Spirit, the water as in that springing water up um, that celestial ladder. They said it's ours. Um, that water is freely given. It is not merchandised, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. You do not merchandise his Holy Spirit. It is freely given to those that thirst for it. You have to thirst for it. And uh, Ezek meaning um, contention, um, contention. And they digged another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of it uh, Sitna. Um, Sitna meaning uh, enmity, uh, opposition. Satan, our adversary. These being those of the synagogue of Satan, our adversary. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. For he said, for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. Uh, this being the third well, 
Um, three is in the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit um, springing uh, up of the living waters um, will spring up at the appointed time. That will be the time of the Spirit. Uh, they will not be able to resist this when it is time. We are to go um, before. We are not to go before that time because we will face uh, great hostility. We have to follow the commands of the angel of the Lord who will go before us. Rehoboth, meaning a wide city to open wide in accumulation in one place, resulting in emptiness, barrenness, uh, and everywhere else beyond be exposed, laid bare. Uh, Twenty three. And he went up from thence to Beersheba, uh, went up to Beersheba, uh, meaning well of oath, well of seven, uh, as in clean, purity. Whatever needs to be purified must first be pulverized, then sorted, and the useful elements are gathered in, and stored, and the fluff, the chaff, the dust, and, uh, and the other garbage is either blown away by the wind, washed away by the water, or burned in the fire. That will be the separating from the bad from the good, um, the day from the night. Um, then um, um, let me read. Let me read uh, Matthew twenty-four verses um, one and two. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. We will be those vessels that will hold his spirit we will be his temple wherever his spirit is will be uh, his temple and jesus says unto them see you not all these things verily i say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down as to crush to powder he has to bring us down uh, to for us to recognize him to reverence him as yahweh uh, we have to be crushed uh, to powder, and then we are molded back into usable vessels um, for his indwelling of his Holy Spirit. Um, you must be uh, crushed first, realizing your weakness of the flesh, and then be rebuilt, rebuilt, molded by the potter into usable vessels acceptable for his Holy Spirit. You also, as lively stones, are built up. He builds you up, not you. He will. He's the one that puts you up that celestial ladder, a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual uh, sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Everything that you have been taught as a flesh man will be taken from you. You will be, um, it will be by scratch down the celestial ladder. And then a lot of uh, people that have been uh, taught by man um will not accept this um they won't they uh, they will not accept being on that lower level and having to climb up but now O oh lord thy art our father um uh, you aren't our potter and we are all the work of thy hand not ours there's nothing that we're going to be able to do ourselves. We have to allow the spirit to take over. And the Lord appeared. On, we have to reverence that spirit as God and stop speaking for, for God. Let him speak. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and I will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. Uh, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? We must be willing to give up our fleshly bodies as living sacrifices. That being give up everything we've ever known in the flesh to allow the spirit to take over. And he built an altar there and he called upon the name of the Lord. and He pitched his tent there and there Isaac's servants digged a well of whom it was said that in Isaac thy seed shall be called. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Prophetically, when God's children heed the call to come out of Babylon, 
Egypt being of the perverse spirit of lies and deceit that holds God's children in captive, in bondage, he will bring them into the wilderness. The wilderness is a solitary place. Um, you will learn the voice of Yahweh, of the spirit. This will be his bread, the bread of, of the, of the um, spirit, angel's food, which is up, um, out of Egypt, up the celestial um, ladder of knowledge. The only way you um, are to be nourished by this bread, this angel's food, is to have your eyes and your ears open to the spiritual realm. Or you will loathe that bread. It will be foreign to you. These, This will be the new teachings. That old lion, um, the... Um, the, that will be our high priest Melchizedek. Uh, some will reject it um, because of their dependence on uh, man's voice. And I'm going to go over to num Numbers uh, 21. Um, I don't know if I'm coming back there, but hold your place. I'm going to go to Numbers 21, verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he look upon it, he shall live. A fiery serpent is a seraphim. When you look upon a seraphim, you are looking upon the throne of God. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings with twain. He covered his face with twain, and he covered his feet with twain, and he did fly. It says, every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, he shall live. And then nine, and Moses made a serpent of brass, and he put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Now this being a serpent in its hiss, not the seraphim, this being any man bitten. In verse eight, it says, any one beheld as to regard with pleasure as to lust over not as um in verse eight looketh upon it there will be the two voices in the wilderness who will you look upon um when you look upon that seraphim you're looking upon the throne of god for deliverance and after jesus received it whosoever looketh upon it and John bear records saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. Then Jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. This is when we will choose those voices. And we're going to go over and read of that in Matthew um, chapter 4 um, verse 2. Uh, verse 1, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness, and he was tempted of the devil. Uh, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungered. 40 meaning probation, um, which is a release of a, uh, an offender from detention subject to a period of good behavior under supervision. The process or period of testing or observing the character or abilities of a person in a certain role. God will test his children. He will not be able to use those uh, who will not recognize his voice because he is our commander in chief of this mighty army, the angel of the Lord who will go before us. He will test those um, that will be in his army. Uh, he has to break you down to build you up. That being as of Matthew um, 24 verses one and two. If this is happening to you, uh, count it as a bless blessing because he favors you. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones, those stones, be made bread. The, that these stones be made bread. God's children are the lively stones, not just any stones. They will be those unmovable rocks built on Christ. That being after Peter received of the Holy Spirit, he became Petra, not any more Petros. Uh, they will come forth at their appointed time. Satan has, we do not have anything to do with um, these stones coming forth, these lively stones. 
But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Not by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That will be uh, the living waters of truth that springs up. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. That will be the mouth of God, his spirit, that will proceed out of our mouths, not our own. And the devil taketh them up into the holy city and setteth them on a pinnacle of the temple. Uh, he will set you up, elevate you to bring you down to serve him. Because he's down, not up. And he says unto him, If thy be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thy dash thy foot against the stone. Uh, he's adding to God's word, lest at any time, from Psalms 91, verse 12, it is always in God's timing. It is God's fight, not our own. He's being our commander-in-chief. That uh, stone will be his rock, tire, that we will remove out of the way when we take on that spiritual man. Uh, he, um, the Satan is, more, is wiser and more powerful than the flesh man. That is why you have to be in the spirit to move him. And Jesus says unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to a yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. It is the faith that will do it. Faith be in what you will not be able to physically see, but you will still believe in. That will be that voice uh, of our commander-in-chief, the word of God, the angel of the Lord that will go before us. Angel being a spiritual messenger. And again... Uh, um, Jesus says unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh them up into an exceedingly high mountain, and he showeth them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. He showeth them all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. He will try to tempt us by worldly gain, elevating us up in his kingdom. God's children are not of this world. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from thence. It is a spiritual um, fighting for truth, the word of God, that, that tree of life against their wise. And he says unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. Fall down. Uh, he elevates you up to serve him, to, uh, to, um, to have you go down, going down that celestial ladder back to the ground. Uh, he being Lucifer, that is of the ground. Then says Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thy shall worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. When he comes to us, and he will, we are not to argue and debate with him. We are to rebuke him. Rebuke is a sharp disapproval or uh, criticism of someone because of their behavior or actions. And then we're going to go back to Numbers um, 21, verse 10. So hopefully you held your place there. Because I didn't. Numbers 21, verse uh, 10. And the children of Israel set forward, and they pitched in Oboth. Uh, Oboth meaning um, dragons, uh, father's desire. And they journeyed from Oboth, and they pitched at Ai on, on Jaabaram in the wilderness, which was before Moab, uh, towards the sun rising. Ai Jaabaram means to bend, twist, usually with a bottom line uh, of ruin or perversion. Uh, also to cross over to the other side, um, which is before uh, Moab. Moab is of thy fleshly father, becoming one with your fleshly father over your spiritual father. Uh, towards the sun rising, God's children are of the morning star. 
of the of that angel of the being a spiritual messenger of the morning i jesus have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches i am the root and the offspring of david and the bright and morning star and from thence they removed and they pitched in the valley of um, um, Zared, um, Zared meaning valley of willows. He took also of the seed of the land and planted it in a fruitful field. He placed it by a great waters and set it as a willow tree. From thence they removed and pitched on the other side of Arnon, which is in the wilderness that cometh out of the coast of the Amorites. For Arnon is the border of Moab between Moab and the Amorites. Arnon meaning to produce, also mean, um, meaning a ringing cry, a joyful cheer or distress. Um, the ringing uh, will be that signal of the marriage union. Um, also meaning high up or aroused. That being high up the celestial ladder to meet I am, that is up at the top. Or to be aroused as to lust after, um, to be spiritually beguiled. Um, by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that um, it is in the wilderness where we are to choose between those two voices, the tree of life or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, the Amorites, meaning the talkers, um, they promise, command, if you just listen to us, we will save you. Uh, you will choo choose um, what border you will cross into. Uh, 14, Wherefore it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord, what he did in the Red Sea and the brooks of Arnon. Uh, he opened up the Red Sea, red being of blood, blood being of the flesh man without the spirit. The water, um, they, are, um, they are just blood, refusing of the living waters. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it's the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. The seas be in the peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues that will serve and elevate the beast system of lies and deceit. Uh, they will have to move out of our way when we go forward. The brooks of Arnon be in the border of Moab between Moab and the Amorites. Moab being of the fleshly father and the Amorites being the talkers, the resistors. Um, they will um, have to, uh, we will have to go through them to get to the other side. That will be by your faith and what you can't see, but you still believe. That will be what will move them out of our way. Uh, the borders um, being in, um, in ancient time were a source of um, contention. Moses sent messengers to the king of Amorites, the Amorites being the talkers, requesting passage through their territory. Promise um, we will not turn aside into any field or vineyard or drink water from any well. We will travel along the king's highway until we pass through your territory. But the king refused. We will come up against resistance before we get to the other side of the land promised or being our rightful inheritance. And then 15. And the stream of the brooks that goeth down to the dwelling of Ar, and he lieth upon the border of Moab. Ar describes an accumulation in emptiness or barrenness. Uh, everywhere else, strip, destitute, uh, trees without leaves, or um, a cave. Um, to make blonde... Um, to make um, clouds forming in the eyes um, also means to expose, lay bare. God's children with the sword of the Lord will expose those, those that stand in their way with the sword of the Lord. That being that angel of the Lord that will go before us, that will have in his hand uh, his power, um, that little book of judgments. That little book is what will expose them, what will move them out of our way. And we'll read of that little book in Revelation 10. That little book will be given to us in the last two and a half months of the Lord's day when Yahweh will come forth in the spirit um, in the vessel he chooses to speak through that will give us this little book. And Revelation 10 verse 8. And the voice which I heard from heaven spoke unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and I said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand. It takes effort on our part. 
angel being a spiritual messenger hand as in power it will be in that angel's hand it's not going to be written down it's going to be in that angel's hand as in his power and i ate it up and it was in my mouth sweet as honey because it will be truth and as soon as i had eaten it my belly was bitter uh, when you eat something you take it into your being you digest upon it think upon it and then it was bitter because it will bring those judgments and he said unto me, Thy must prophesy again before many peoples, nations, and tongues, and kings. The peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues is what the beast will uh, rise up out of. That is where the, these judgments will take place. And from thence they went to um, Beer, that is, that is the well whereof the Lord spake unto Moses, Gather the people together, and I will give them water. Beer meaning well to, to, uh, as to be clean, to, to uh, purify. That will be the center of learning information. This information will come to us in the last two and a half months of the Lord's day. This information will move them out of our way so we can go forward. Uh, gather the people together. That will be the two witnesses prophetically who will be given that reed like a rod to measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Moses meaning drawn out of the waters. This will be the flood waters of Egypt of lies and deceit into the living waters. And I'm just going to end it with um, John chapter 4 starting with um, verse uh, 6. Now Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, set thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. The sixth hour is still the sixth dimension of time when man can still do all their labor and all their work. That being the grace period. That will be the Elijah ministry. That will be the first two and a half months of the five-month period of the Lord's day. And there cometh a woman of Samaria, Samaria meaning watch mountain. She's on spiritual watch. So he's coming to visit her. And Jesus says unto her, give me to drink. For his disciples were going away into the city to buy the meat. We are not to go into the city. We are to come out of the city and we are not to buy meat. It is not to be merchandise. It will be given to us at the appointed time. Meat being what will come in the last two and a half months when, um, when Yahweh will enter into the vessel he chooses to speak through. Then says the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask of drink of me, which am a woman of, of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said unto her, if thy knewest the gift of God and who it is that says to thee, give me to drink, thy would have asked of him. And he would have given thee the living water. It is uh, he that will provide it to us. And the woman says unto him, sir, thy has nothing to draw with. And the well is deep as in, in the ground deep from whence then has thy this living water. Uh, she's not perceiving now who is speaking to her, that, that spirit that's within the vessel. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Now she's perceiving that he is greater than father Jacob, the heel grabber, the supplanter. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drink above that, this water shall thirst again, that being thirst for truth. You will continually thirst for that truth. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him, a well of water springing up into everlasting life, springing up that celestial ladder. And the woman says unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. And Jesus says unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. Before he can provide her of this living water, she has to recognize him as her husband, and the woman said, I have no husband. And Jesus says unto her, Thy has well said, I have no husband. For thy has had five husbands, five meaning grace, and who, he whom thy now has is not thy husband, is set aside truly. Because he is her husband, he's waiting for her to um, perceive that. And then the woman says unto him, Sir, I perceive that thy art a prophet. She perceives now what he's trying to tell her. 
Our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship, Jerusalem prophetically be in a condition of truth. Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. And Jesus says unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. When the four winds are released, God's Holy Spirit will be withdrawn from this earth. It will only be in those that have taken up the marriage. You know, you worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for the salvation is of the Jews, that being of Judah. Uh, that will come forth first in the spirit for you brethren have become followers of the churches of god which are in judea which are in christ jesus but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him he is seeking those out that understand that he's a spirit and he has and he must enter into a vessel he being the lord of hosts god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth and the woman says unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, as in Christos, the anointed one. When he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus says unto her, I that speak unto thee am, am he. I being that spirit um, that's within a vessel uh, as being am. I am. And upon this came his disciples, and they marveled that he talked with the woman, yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? And the woman then left her water pot, that being of the six-day man, uh, working, um, and went her way into the city, and says to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did, is not this the Christ? And then they went out of the city, and they came unto him that being the spirit of Yahweh within the vessel, that woman um, that is calling them out of the city and to come to the spirit of the marriage. And you know what? And let me end it with this. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. It is freely given to those that thirst. And we will end this today, elect. You have a great day until the morning.